Hey guys, and hello and welcome to another narrative, or the narrative, as I like to call it. Um, today, a bit of unboxing and a bit of um, item purchases. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for bargains, always especially, not, especially things to do with what I like, like movies, film, anime, manga, uh, hats. I'm always collecting hats because... I like to get hats that are blank, like this baby here, this army hat here, I mean, not army, olive hat here, which I'm going to do the old um, red dot design on it, which is, if, let me see if I've got it close by, uh, red dot, not, not design, but red dot logo on it, which is this one here, like his, his, his mask, and it's, it's, I've, I spent a lot of time designing that mask between myself and Shane and like got it right and that's Shane Evans the co-creator co of Red Dot with me and I'm actually working on the script I was thinking about um writers we can't actually like show us like writing a page and changing it because but artists can artists can go all right so blah 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 here it is look look and then another one because it's very different to writing process and um hopefully you can hear me i'm using a lapel mic today um and i've never used it before so i'm hoping the sound's coming through i should have checked i don't usually check on there but I haven't anyway so i forgot what i was saying yeah so writers you know we we tend to like um hold it to our uh, you know to our chest and put the final result out and um especially if you're a script writer even that's even different because you know you don't want to give anything away so i tend to i sometimes tend to share little portions of it on instagram i go this is here or even on 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 the facebook page for plunge convention uh or plunge enterprises yeah so i um i go this is a snippet here of this is my you know here's a page of my artist actually doing the artwork that I've given um, his directions on how to, uh, that panel or full pages looks like. So if you go to, um, after this, if you go to Plunge, Enterpr um, Plunge Convention on Facebook, you know, forward slash Plunge Convention, you'll find that like there's a couple pages down, uh, a couple posts down. There's actually me posting about um, James Hill doing a page from uh, my, comic, my, my story, uh, Templeton Rise and Fall. The first page you see is a full page and him doing the pencils and then me coming over and lettering it because I letter out my own work because I like a specific way of looking um, the letters looking and I don't like to impose my uh, I don't like to see bubble speech bubbles actually on really good artwork I, I just oh, it annoys me when I see a an artist who's done all this amazing artwork and somebody some letterer who doesn't even think about that goes look like me putting an artwork like over like bubble right over here right when i've got all the space all over here i got space but i'm gonna go and like put it across his body it doesn't make sense to me and i kind of that's why i do my own i'm um, lettering and we've got like five books coming at five six books coming out and also the comic strip right shibi and pj which you can read for free um 17 three um three panel strips for free on plunge comics.com if you go there and you're gonna read that later so yeah so i mean back to writing right so i sometimes do that i, I just want to show people um how i um, how artists take my writing and my description and turn it into actual page of comic book right or panels and stuff and i and i and i love it i think it's it's a real privilege to work with artists who know what i'm what i'm thinking or can bring my work uh, and to you know and visualize my work and so I think that's a great thing I think it's a really well you know and the other thing is I like to communicate with my artists a lot um, I find because I'm working with different artists and different artists work a different way they work at different paces they have different styles and so you'll get one who knows exactly what I'm aiming for and someone will go mm, maybe tweak that or somebody will go okay I don't understand what you're trying to do and so I I and you know with me i got to take that all on board and go okay this is you know and talk it through 
and other artists I'll just let go and do that. So that's that about you know artists. And so this is going to be a red dot. I've decided it's going to be a red dot um, um, logo on here. Like I've got my Incredible logo, right? Um, this is going to be a red dot one. And this is going to either be given to one person or another person. I like to do um like because like there I don't have a lot of money as such, and nor does the company. So my way of doing um like actually you know trying to val show value to people who are involved with me. And I know this is a bit weird to say, is that I give gifts. I go and put my time in, and I give gifts. Like I do T-shirts, and I give that away. I do designs on hoodies, and I give that away, and you know, and I'm doing one at the moment for Jason, and Jason decided, you know, I showed you last time, where he wanted, like, um, to cover up the, um, the saying on the top, and then put a patch on it, a huge patch of red dot, and on the back, he said, why don't you put a, you know, um, a, a bullseye on it, and I go, okay, yeah, why not, but then I got to find, <laughs> I got to find a sewing machine, and sew it on there, and that's a cool thing, so moving on to hats, I was able to get this uh, My Hero Academia hat for five bucks. Normal price for this thing, and this is this week, it's 25 bucks. Look, it's $25. And all right, so it came down to, I think it was like $10 and then $5. All right, and that's pretty cool. And I got, now I have it. And this was from JJ's, right? So I got two hats to, this week that, a blank one and a My Hero Academia. The other thing, while I was in there and I was just walking out, I saw on like you know as I was you know on JJ's I saw a, a Junji Ito um, t-shirt right um, t-shirt and Junji Ito of course as you might know or might not know is a amazing manga artist who does horror who's a real really really amazing horror a manga horror artist and you know writer and so I was going to go in for that I looked and I saw this that cool this is a 35 dollar um shirt and i got this for five bucks brand new there was lucky there's two sizes there was an extra small or xs and and then there was a small size and because i'm a skinny dude right as you can see i'm pretty skinny right i can't fit a small and um and that means that i ended up with two t-shirts this week and and that's because i found this one How's that? I used to buy Thrasher magazines way back when I was into skateboarding, when I was a six, 15, 16 year old, all the way into my 20s, uh, maybe about 22. And I still owned a, um, um, a skateboard way up to about, gosh, 95. So from 88, I actually, to be honest, my first skateboard was a Christmas present by my dad which about 84 got accidentally ran, driven over by my mum and then I made a, I took the wheels and I made a uh, I made a put a wooden um, a piece of wood on top of it and that was me skating around that uh, you know things you do when you're a kid you know, improvise and that's basically what it comes down to my mental thinking is uh, my way of thinking is that if something is there and it's broken you can try to fix it uh, and you don't throw away something because it's broken, because you could make some value out of it. As you guys know, I do that a lot. And I've spoken about that, about, you know, um, getting a standee. And we've been able to, in 2008, 19, and for for three years, we've been able to use that standee. Uh, we paid, you know, like at that first time, it was like 80 bucks. It cost me, it might be over 180 bucks or something. Uh, no, over 180 bucks, sorry, not 180 bucks, over 80 bucks to get, and Curta Girl and Nano on, uh, not Nano, Red Dot on there and use that as a, um, as a standee that we can, like, standee is basically a poster, right? A, um, a full size, like, you know, not a full size, but about a five meter, five meter high poster, cardboard poster, and it's got like a little thing at the back, so it stands up on its own, that's why I call it a standee. So what we did was we had, um, I designed it and I had, Shane actually, um, you know, set it up for me and printed, and we paid our local um, local 
uh, place that um, Shane works at. That's how, you know the connections are either, but um, but they were able to um, do it, do a he he was able to print it out on vinyl for us, and now we've been able to use it for three years at the library. And I made this. I took <laughs> I took talking about things like this, right? I'm thinking ahead. I took a medicine box that I have, which has paracetamol. I emptied it out. I cut it up. And I put sticky, you know, the vinyl pieces that I cut away from it, from to get my, you know, the thing on it. And I put the medicine bo box onto it. And then now I can use flyers in it, right? This is key. Oh, well, my ingenuity. I could say key ingenuity. I've just been taught by my dad to just, you know, to think outside the box forever, right? And so that was pretty cool. And um, and we've been able to use it for three years. And we just take it there. I bring him back home. Glenn's really cool. He's the, uh, I think he's the manager of the children's one. I can't remember which, but he's a general GM there at the Fungo City Library. And they've been great to us. I mean, like seriously, they've been amazing supporters. And I think I might have said it before, they, they are amazing. I would, like, I would actually like to do a live stream with them on the, on here sometime with, um, I think it's Myri and... Uh, Glenn and a couple of the other folks there. Oh, Nairi, sorry, not Murray. Nairi and a couple of folks there. They've been um, amazing. Uh, if you go to Plunge um, page, you can see an interview with Nairi about talking about them involved, being involved with us. And that's been like for three years, man. I mean, like, Plunge has so much support in the community that I'm just so grateful for. And they've basically taken over our children's area. And it's just, it's so amazing to have somebody just come in like that and go, we'll look after that. You know, I asked, them, hey, can you guys? And they go, yeah, we'll look after that. I asked for this year, and they said, yeah, we'll look after that. So it's, you know, these are things. So moving on. Another thing that I picked up, like talking about writing earlier, two bucks. I saw this, and I said, I got to have it. I got to have it. All right, it was one of my favorite movies. And this is, I, you know, it won a best screenplay, original screenplay, 1994, right? So Pulp Fiction, right? One of the things that I, why I like Pulp Fiction, there's a movie made in the late 70s, might be 78, uh, which is like kind of like a Butch and the Sun, Sundowns Kid Bollywood version of it, of the Westerns, and the way it's about two guys who go to this place who are hired to take care of some scoundrels. And there's a famous line, and it says, E Kalya, get ne um, Admire, or admise, which means, hey, Blackie, how many men were there, all right? Kali is black, but that's the name of the guy, right? And so it's a villain talking to another, his henchman. It's the most famous line in all of Bollywood. And um, I grew up watching that at the theater, if I remember right, in Fiji. And um, so the reason I mentioned that and why I, you know, why I think this, you know, this because it's non-linear surely the movie is non-linear it goes back and forth and i wrote uh, i write a lot like that and i think sometimes my artists get confused about how i do that it's just the way of indian um and because i've been raised on that sort of back and forth back and forth storytelling uh sometimes uh, my, um my artists get a bit confused about what i'm trying to do i think uh, i think in a movie sense you could make it happen but uh, make it understandable. And I've had run this in this, I've been told this before, uh, two decades back, about my style of writing, that you can, um, because I write in this non-linear way, it can get confusing. But I'm thinking visually, when I'm writing it, I'm thinking, okay, how's this gonna look on this uh, on the page, All right? So my um, so if I'm doing that way, so if, if you're using color, it's easy. Right, you just make it um, um, you make it um, sepia, or black and white, or you do some, you know, do it in a negative way so you can just show it. So it just means it's it's a bit harder for the artist to understand what I'm trying to do. But that's where the discussion has to happen, where you go, okay, this is what I'm trying to do, and why I'm trying to do that because of this. So if you read my comic, um, the mini series, um, six or seven series, the Circle, right, which is available from Rises and Comics. And also I have some prints of it here. Now all six issues I have it here. And I'm saving it to release it as a six issue set at Plunge this year. And um, I've got to figure out how I'm going to do it. I want to, 
if I have enough money, I'm going to make a box, like a, like a slip case, so I can put all six into it. And isn't it, like, I'm thinking that in my head, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be awesome to, to have all this six in a little slip case and go, here, you know, whether I have a square bound or whether it's just a slip, you know, um, like an envelope. But something, i got to do something, and I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll have to talk to my guys, and I'll figure it out. But it all costs money, so I'm going to have to try to raise some money for that. But that's, so I, like, talking about that. So I wrote The Circle as a TV, sh uh, no, sorry, as a movie, right? I, I had a, um, I've mentioned this before, but I'm just talking about the comic now. So I met, um, I went to film, um, there's a choice, right? Uh, when my ex was saying, hey, I need, I think we, I, sh I should go get a degree in, uh, in IT, and there's a place here, which a friend of ours actually said to her, that they're offering zero fees, right? So no fees. But of course, no fees means you have to come up with the money to actually live there and do that. So we were, we had government support at the time, but I was working, you know, I was working part-time as well to make it, you know, pay any other bills that we had to live adequately and stuff and be, uh, live above our means, as they say, but have the money to be able to, you know, go get a coffee or whatever, go to movies whenever you want, or take your, you know, take your missus up for, for, you know, 70 bucks for a meal, which you can't do if you're a student, right? But you're able to do that if you are working part-time. And I was working a lot part-time. Uh, several different jobs over several, you know, those three years. Uh, so anyway, so how did I get to that? Oh yeah, the circle. So I went, I said to my ex, I said, listen, uh, if they only have a film degree, I will go there. We can go there. And it was, and, and lo and behold, they did. And I, you know, we packed up, we sold some items, uh, saved up, I think, about $1,800, cost $1,800, $1,500 to $1,800 to get a 20-foot container or 10-foot container, yeah, a 10-foot container to put all our other stuff in and take it all the way down to Bilago. And then we had to do, bring it all, do the same thing and bring it all the way back up to Auckland, where we moved to. And then six months, seven months later, I had a car accident. All right. And that meant that I, whatever I just wanted to do, which is filmmaking, my body couldn't handle the stat work, you know, standing up long times. Uh, because, and that meant I was, I was salesman, which meant I was on my feet all the time, 40, 40 hours a week, right? Oh, um, and so, anyway, so I went there to do, make a film. That was my whole thing. I had to make a feature film. And I looked, lo and behold, it said you had, a, as a part of your degree, you could make up to a 45 minute film or two 20 minute films and that short films and you could wake it up as your degree passed but because my aim was to go there and make a full feature length student film i ended up making a i think it was hour and 15 minutes in total or hour and 25 minute film and um and part of that i was able to shoot five minutes of that in fiji because i went over for a holiday uh, I think not for might have been actually for a wedding or something, and you know, and that's the thing. How does someone go to Fiji for a holiday on a student, you know, allowance as we were on, which meant because that's because I was working, and it meant that I was able to pay my way there and pay my ex's way there as well, and she was doing some couple hours as well, but not as many as me, and so and uh, you know because it was the jobs I was able I was qualified to do a lot of different jobs because I'd spent years doing so many different jobs prior to being actually a student and I think it was like 33 or something like that so this was in two, um, 19, 2003 midway through 2003 when we went down there I think yeah 2003 to 2006 4, 5, 6 yeah yeah so 3 years so 4, 5, 6 was my degree year and so yeah, filmed five minutes in Fiji while I was there. Got a camcorder out that I borrowed from a mate, I think. Uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it was Xavier that let me, um, you know, we call him X. Xavier, um, who let me borrow his camera and I took it to Fiji and I said, my, I had my uh, cousin dig a hole. It was amazing, had less dug, dug a hole for the scene. Um, and then I had my other cousin, his, his older sister, basically be a part of that. And then I had my uncle, who's their father, basically be a part of that as well. And so, you know, I was able to do this at our family home in Fiji and uh, my patriarchal home, I should say. 
on a land that, you know, that, um, that was given to my family uh, way back then to, um, to farm and live on. And so, you know, um, I, think it's, I think it's freehold or something like that. Anyway, so shot five months in Fiji, brought that back, and then shot, spent two weeks, okay, guys, two weeks to shoot a feature-length film and uh, most of it was because of, there was a lot of discussion. Uh, basically, basically like this. I basically like um, um, Pulp Fiction. There was a lot of talk, a lot of conversation. So it was like a crime drama, and we had such an awesome, um, awesome help. I think the m current mayor of Invercargill's in it, Darren Ludlow. Uh, a couple of my friends are in it, and I think um, there's also Mains who's on here. Uh, Thomas Kershaw, he's in it. All right, uh, and don't don't worry, Mains. I will get these comics to you once I get the box set design, the flip slipcase design, man. I will definitely get it to you. And I'm so excited to let you guys know that Mains is now um, is now learning um, art. He's um, illustration. He's looking learning comic illustration. So I'm hoping that in two years, when he's honed his skills because he's working hard at it, that he'll be a part of us, right? That he'll become a part of us and doing artwork for my for me for my writing or for his own comic book to work with us you know and this is a great thing of being part of um putting together plunge enterprises is that i can show people you know excuse me that i can um that i can have my own you know friends that i've known that have done degrees in filmmaking who've went down to Invercargill to do that and haven't had a chance to make films but now can do comics with me you know and this is the great things about it and same thing as my friend um you know um, Shane, who's, a, who's done years of uh, graphic design and stuff and learning illustrations and stuff, is now able to do, come up and design characters and work with me. Um, and yeah, in this business, right? And um, so, yeah, so we, I'll, give me a second, I'll bring the. Um, give me one second, hopefully this works. Oh. So what? I, yeah. So we're able. To, you know, I went down there and the this view students, right? Uh, people, friends we knew, and our friends who went out and looked for uh, student friends who went and looked out for um, getting um, actors and stuff. And here's my mate Nick. He was in our class, right? Uh, one of the main actors. And I know. I think this is. I can't remember um, his name, but like, yeah. So this is like this. We've got six issues of all imprinted. All right, this is in 2019. I think it was, yeah, I finished it in 2019. Um, and all in print now. I mean, it's quality as well. That's what I like about our comic books. The covers are like cardboard, almost like thin cardboard, but not too thin, but you know. And uh, yeah, so there's that. So I was able to do this, um, write the film. Um, and I spent 90, uh, 96. I spent 2003 and 2004 writing it. Amongst all the other stuff I, I wrote, right? I wrote a lot of stuff when I was there, and uh, Final Zenith is one of them, uh, which we're going to be bring, which is part of Plunge Universe. Uh, we've got, we're waiting for artists to come into there, and then I'll start scripting. Um, like the, like it's huge. The Final Zenith is huge. Like it's already got 10, um, 45 minute, uh, script, page, 45 pages of script. 10 of them. That's 450 pages and and when i was like i was writing when i was in doing my filmmaking course i was going doing 40 hours of work i mean sorry i was doing doing about 60 maybe a huge amount of hours at school uh at, um at at uni whatever and then i was going 20 hours of work after after that and then i would spend all my time writing like seriously there's like thousands over thousands of pages of like scripts that I have on the computer that I'm slowly going to bring into Plunge Universe. Anyway, so I got to film. I got to film it with my friends, with the help um, of everybody. I ended up actually ended up filming it myself, as well as directing it, right? As well as having written it. 
and producing it. <laughs> but we had lots of great fun, lots of help. And to, uh, um, the only negative thing was that uh, one of uh, the main actors' pants got ripped on a barbed wire and I didn't have the money to pay for it. That sucked because like, at the end of it, I was like skint. We had saved up about $500 of our own money to pay towards it and so on. And then, you know, there was this $500 that was part of like the course that you could put into it as well. Anyway, I was always thinking like ahead. I was thinking about how, how well I could do this. But then afterwards, like I said, um, in 2007, when I had my injury, I just sat at home with the Illustrator, I think it was, or was it Photoshop? I can't remember. It's been so many years. It's about 15 years only. And just with the mouse button, just ticking num uh, you know, points and then putting black into it and so on. So it's a black and white film. Um, sorry, black and, black and white comic book. All right, so that's that. All six is on. All right, so next thing I want to talk about, Flash. Oh, save you the universe. So as you know, this is directed by Mike Hodges, Sam, Sam J. Jones, Mel Jensen, Onella, Onella Muti, and Max Van Saito. Three bucks. Latest addition to my collection of DVDs. Sci-fi, fantasy, and superhero is what I collect. Anime, manga, um, sorry, manga, no, anime and uh, cartoons or animation movies as well. So I'm quite excited. Uh, I was, it was kind of like humming hiring, like, it's such a, you know, this is such an old movie. And I think it's been re-released here by Studio Canal in 1980. So yeah, this is from 1980. So yeah, three bucks, man. You know, Queen did the soundtrack for, for this, which is like, yeah, like the Highlander, right? Look at that. Such a cool logo as well. All right. So we're done with that. We're done with that. I'll grab a drink of water. Let's talk about finally. <laughs> Let's talk about finally about the comics this week. All right. So there is no, um, right. There's no um, name of who sent it which is great. I love it when I don't know who, who's sending me this, right? But I, I mean, I, I bought it, of course, but I know I haven't checked to who sent it. I like the surprises because some, I forget what I buy and sometimes I forget when to pay, right? But that's my brain at work. So, um, so it's cool to find, you know, get something like this and not know who sent it because, I mean, this, you know, the posting knows who sent it because they had to, you know, they brought it over. And but like the sender, um, you know, the sender's names in the computer, but not on the box. Like, it's, and which makes it really cool. So let's have a look what we got here. Oops, not one more, one more line of um, solid tape to cut. Or area. So this is uh, up to 3 kgs, so I don't, I don't think it's 3 kgs for the comics, but it is a lot of comics. All right, let's see what we got here today. Sorry to take so long to get the box to the unboxing, but there were some things I want to show off first. Bubble wrap, really well done. Thank you, sir. Uh, I know it's a sir because I don't think I bought it with a ma'am. Uh, right, so a bit more here. Let's be gentle. Uh, oh yeah, and also more cardboard. As you can see, tissue paper on the side, so it doesn't move. And that's a cool thing. I think this I bought this from um, from NZCNC, uh, someone on there. I will check later who it is, of course, to let them know that I've got it. But I just want I like these surprise um, deliveries. I mean, not knowing what's actually in there. So a lot of tissue and a lot of comics. Seriously, this is a lot of comics, guys. Sorry for that. So let's have a look. Oh, look at this. You're gonna love this. This is a lot of X-Men in here. Now, these X-Men are ones that I used to own. <laughs> I'm getting a bit teary. Uh, <laughs> shit, I didn't think I'd feel like that. Sorry for swearing. I wanted to make this for all ages, but it's not sorry. So a lot of these I used to own. Um, not every single one, but a lot of these I used to own. So, um, and because it's been like, gosh, 
when I was 18, 18, 19, 20, all right, which would make it 30 odd years, 30 odd years, yep, it'll make it 30 odd years, I can think, all right, so, oh. <laughs> all right, I'm just trying to get them in order, oh, uh, okay, oh, you know, you guys don't know how it feels to, I mean, <laughs> Mm. to have these in my hands again just feels so cool uh, you know who you are when you see that who, who sent this so uh, I mean who I got this off so I'm just going to get them on it so when I um, show it it's actually um, has a kind of like has a numbers in, like in the order they need to be And they didn't cost me that much, which is what is really awesome about this also. Um, you know, and they're good condition, fair or very, very good. Um, or fine even. So shall we start? From the back or forward? Let's go from the forward. <sighs> this is 1992. Forge and Storm Kissing. Forge, Forge was one of my favorite characters, as was, I think, Jubilee and Will Rain. But I really like Forge. I really connected with Forge because he was a builder. He liked to use his hands. And I felt that, you know, I, I kind of felt a connection to him. But he was also Native American. And that kind of, I don't know, I think in my head at that time, I was really into Native American art and stuff. And that kind of sort of like a connection but i for me forge kind of like um yeah like i said he built things he was he was a guy who built i think if i remember right he built cerebro right and i always get annoyed that they haven't brought him into it to say this is forge he built and i'm doing the movies that he built cerebro right this is how talented forge was right and whilst potashio and i can't remember who else is fingers is on there and this is celebrating also celebrating 30 years of um amazing spider-man 1962 to 1992 this is this is very very good very fine so i'm really excited about that i've been trying to get forge comics and one of my mates rico said well i would have thought you had had all these i was like since you like that guy so much i was like no i just uh, you know when you lose something it takes you a while to get it back i'll get your get your um, heart back into it or your headspace back into it so yeah so this is um 259 colossus colossus unleashed against the stenotians and remember that one where they're um when they're going after Jub i'm trying to get jubilee back if i remember right or in rogue back from genosha you know that dictatorship where they fascist dictatorship against mutants all right um, so it's kind of like trying to tell a story about the Jews and Nazi Germany and stuff, but in mutant world, modern day, uh, that's what I felt anyway. So sorry about that. That's what I felt anyway. So I hope the mic's working fine. And this is a really cool one again. I think this is, oh, this is Silvestri. Mark Silvestri's art and his, yeah, amazing art. This is, uh, Magistrates 2 Mutant Zero. This is two three six man this is such a cool cover right uh this is uh the fall of the mutants number two two six uh this is sylvestri again which is a really interest like it's just really interesting going from like something like that like colorful to this right only oh sorry that went backwards my bad that went backwards so that's two i'll leave that for later Right, so that's 237, right, and here you go, right, Rogue, I love this cover, this is such a cool cover, it's one of my favourites, right, Wolverine and Rogue, all aboard the mutant train, you know, and um, yeah, if you know about history, 
of Nazi, uh, Nazi um, Germany about the trains. It's, it's good to learn about history, man. Um, you've got another one here by Silvestri. Is it Silvestri or is it Levens? B. Levens. So this is a different one. This says, Welcome to the X-Men. Havoc. This is 219. X-Men. And, um, yeah, look at the faces on that. It's like creepy. See that? Look at his face on Rogue. Magneto at the back there. Wolverine. It makes you wonder what that's all about. So this is 210. This is a, come on, mess with us. Make our day. The blade on there is pretty, pretty long. On Wolverine's blade. So this is 210. This is UK and Canada. Um, oh, well, they're all UK and Canada, isn't it? Yeah, it's all UK and Canada as well as US. So there's 202. This is uh, St um, St uh, Secret Wars 2 continues in this issue. So this is 202. And it has um, J. Romita Jr. Yeah, J. Romita Jr. You can see their artwork there. And it's the, oh gosh, now I've forgotten, Sentinels. And then you've got 201. Who will lead them? The X-Men. Um, Storm versus um, Cyclops there. That's 201. And then you've got double-sized. Oh, there's a previous one was double-sized. Oh, no, we're getting to the double-sized soon. Oh. Okay, okay, I missed that one. Okay, so I'll do this to 200 and we'll go to the other one. So this is a news um, newsprint, um, news, a newsstand, um, variant cover, right? I mean, variant edition. And so this is 200, issue 200, double size, Magneto. Who is that? Hmm, I, can't, I don't know who those, I can't remember who those two are. So there's children. Anyway, so Magneto and handcuffs. It's a pretty cool cover. And this is by J J um, John Romita Jr. and DG8. Uh, eight? DG8, eight? I'm not sure who that is. Um, okay, before I forget. So this is for the mutants. Uh, special double size. This is 226. That's the one I was talking about earlier. About Silvestri. Alright. Now, this is 189. Um, January 1984. This is another. Um, gosh, who is it? I can't remember. Um, is that Psylocke? Hmm. Or the White Queen. Anyway, this is um, another newsstand. Man, this is a very immaculate. I mean, not immaculate, immaculate, but very fine condition. This is. Um, 189, and you've got the two, three um, three males there, and I, I don't know who the one with the scratch, um, thing, this one here is. I don't know who that is. Uh, is that, I can't, is it Raven? No, not Raven. It's um, someone else. I think that's the daughter. I might be wrong. Cy um, Cyclops and Jean Grey's daughter. So who's the cover on that? Oh. The name's hidden. The artist's name is hidden. Maybe it was right there. That sucks. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I always like, I, I remember doing the changing um, Shane's signature, like cutting it and bring it higher so it could be more seen. More, you know, you could see that as his art because it was kind of in the corner, so I went. Copy paste, and I said, then I said to him, I think I said to him, is that okay, man? And I think he said, okay, yeah, it's fine. Uh, and so, yeah, so there's that newsstand one, and there's another newsstand one. Um, where you, I wonder if this is Sylvester. Um, but yeah, again, it's been covered. Yeah, this is uh, 188. The other one was uh, 189. Kai Dispray. Cry da spray. Sprayer? The sprayer? This is 144. 
Oh, it used to be 50 cents back then. 1981. I think that's when I came to New Zealand. Number fifth, um, nine, April 141. 50 cent. Guest during the macabre, macabre, macabre? Man thing. Look at that. Yeah. All right. So the last two to go. So that was, oh, that, that should have been the last one, 144. So, put that side, I can put it later. So this is 165. Uh, it's a brood, if I remember right. This is a brood. And DS, this is DMS8. Eddie, DMS8. Okay, I don't know whose um, name is that. So this is 75 cents in 1982, which is, why is that 75 cents? Ah, uh, that's when they raised the price. Oh, yeah. So, no, 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 sorry, my bad. That's, um, at 60 cents. 75 cents, Canada. And it was 25p. Right? And that's 70 cents now. Right? So, this is number 165. And the brood. This is um, Storm turning into the brood. So as I said, this, um, I'm not sure who that's, um, that's, you know, you can comment later. I mean, comment, please, if, if you know who that is. Um, it'd be cool. Um, yeah, that's been interactivity. So that was um, a normal, um, this is Cockrell in Washek. Washek. And this is number 161, 1982, and 60 cents. And this is a magneto. And that's weird because is it the first time I've got one with um, Professor X on there? Yeah, Xavier. That's pretty cool. This is a newsstand one as well, which is made really, really cool. So there you go, number 161. So last but not least is the 144 from earlier, 50 cents. So you can see the price jumps up from like, between 161 uh, between 144 and 161 to 60 cents so between a year like this is within a year which is weird within a year it jumped up 50 more cents um so 81 to 1982 it jumped up this is pretty cool i just noticed that it's like it's almost like supposed to be there but it's not really supposed to be so if you have a look see how like that little bit there like that line from Xavier's head, I mean, his, his side, side thing, is coming across through there. I wonder if it's the same artist, because that would make it really interesting, whether it was planned that way or not. But yeah, artists are really cool. I think they have, you know, to be able to take some, take my words, especially my artists, take my words and turn it into actual illustrations that look cool. Okay, uh, I think my neighbor's doing, putting some water for the garden. So I want to finish up here and say thank you for joining me. I know this was a bit of a long video talking about a lot of things and then getting finally to the good stuff. Um, so thank you wherever you are. Be well, be safe. And kakito ano that is. See you next time. And we'll see you next time. Until next time, see you later. Um, be well, okay? Uh, thanks for joining me on the narrative. Please like, subscribe or share uh, if you enjoy my videos.